Before we get into today's Monaco video, we have some important business to attend to. As you'll remember, on episode one of this series on Friday, I did say I would be randomly selecting one of the people who commented on that video to win a copy of Football Manager 2018. I'm now back from my little weekend away down in Comic-Con, so the winner is... Hold on. The winner is... It's so cold in here, I can't click my fingers properly. The winner is... Joshua Burley. Joshua, I've realised the one drawback of doing competitions through Twitter, through YouTube comments is that I don't have a way to get in touch with you. <laughs> if you can get in touch with me, I'll then arrange to get the uh, the game over to you. But Joshua Burley, thank you very much for entering. Thank you very much for everyone who did enter. Response to that first video has been excellent. And now we get into the new episode in the series. And oh, goodness me, I hope we start winning some football matches. Hello and welcome to part four of my Football Manager 2018 beta save with Monaco. I'm Kev and yeah, that's right. I say beta, not beta, because I think that's the correct way to say it because that's how I was taught when I was at school. If you prefer to say beta, go for it. It's beta. So, since you were last with me, we've played a couple of games. I've been fiddling with tactics because as you will recall from the last video, um, it all went a little bit wrong. Um, we lost against Dijon. I then lost again against Metz trying a 4-2-3-1. Um, I was then going to try the 4-3-1-2, which was so successful for me in Football Manager 2017. But then remembered I'd tried that with Posh in my stream save and that hadn't worked at all either. So we switched to a diamond for the game against Marseille, 1-3-0, kept the diamond for the game against Nice, 1-3-1, and I think we might now have our tactic, at least for the time being. It is a diamond, it's a very, very attacking diamond, it's a Kev-style diamond, um, complete with um, complete wing-backs on both sides on attack. We've kept the ball playing central defenders, uh, but we've switched to having one as a stopper, one on cover, which was suggested by quite a few of you down in the comments. Um, we're then having a register in behind the uh, the diamond. we I played with, um, I fiddled in the past with trying an anchor man um, or a defensive midfielder on support, but the register, the register um, just gives us a little bit more a little bit more involvement in the rest of the game other than just sitting there booting the ball away which i mean if it if we had to if it had to come down to it and we were winning games i could handle just sitting there booting the ball away but at the moment it seems to be working with fabinho still getting involved in other parts of the game as well and then in midfield we've got Tielemans as a box to box midfielder and Matinho as a playmaker on attack with lamar in behind the front two as an attacking midfielder on attack uh, falcao as an advanced forward and jovetic as a complete forward on support it seems to be working quite well so far we're on control and fluid i've got an absolute turn of team instructions on i hate having all these team instructions on but i was getting quite frustrated with the game earlier on this morning and just looked at this screen and for oh you know what forget everything i know about tactics let's just tick everything that i'd like us to be able to do i want us to play a high tempo i want us to close down a lot um we're going we, we need to be playing fairly narrow because it's a diamond i want to continue playing the ball out of defense we've got to exploit the middle because we're playing narrow that's why our width is is narrow as well we want to be passing into space short passing is nice i always enjoy watching short passing I always overlap. We need to work the ball into the box. I want to be running at the defence. I just can't... I'm looking at this thinking, well, in my dream way of playing, what what isn't as important to me? I guess I could drop the defensive line back a little bit again, but it seems silly playing with a normal or a deeper defensive line when we've only got two players who are ever anywhere near the defence. Let's play with a higher defensive line, a two-man offside trap, and... Hopefully not get caught out too often. I mean, that might be completely counterintuitive, but it seems to be working so far. And it seems to be working. So perhaps perhaps the old rule that... I don't even know where I got it from, but I've always worked for the last two, two three versions of Football Manager. Always thought, right, never have more than sort of four or five play um, team instructions on. And I've never wavered from that, but we're wavering from it at the moment and it seems to be working. So officially, Kev does tactics and in the last two games I've played offline, it worked. We're now playing Roma in the Champions League. That's quite a big test. Let's see if it works against them. So we need to give out a squad number to our new left back signing. That's right, we've signed another player. I forgot actually. George has injured. He's broken his leg. He's out until the new year. So in a panic buy on deadline day, not even a panic buy, a panic loan, we brought in Park Juhu um, from Dortmund. We paid a million pounds to bring him in on loan, despite the fact he's never really played for Dortmund. But we were absolutely desperate for a, for a left back. 
Um, we, we left with the situation where we only had Terence Congolo as our only option. Um, I mean, it seems perfectly acceptable, but I couldn't go with just the one left back at the entire club. So we brought in a reserve for him and then George will hopefully be back for... January time. We've spent all our money now. They go, oh, I still like this screen. It's still a really nice screen. Um, I do want some feedback from you all today down in the comments, just to keep the all the excitement in the comments going, because I'm enjoying just how busy the comments have been on the last few episodes. Obviously, we're playing on 3D in the, with the sideline view. Um, yeah, we're going to be great. We play with the sideline view on 3D because I think it's the best view. And when we had our stream on launch night, it was pretty unanimous that it was the best view. But looking around at some of the other videos that I've been catching bits of over the weekend, I haven't really watched much of what anybody else has done so far because I've been at Comic-Con the whole, the whole time. But I've watched little bits of other people's videos. Sideline view doesn't seem to be as, or as prevalent as I was expecting. Is it the right view, or do you prefer some of the views some of the other creators are using? I'm, I'm all for making it so that you you're comfortable and happy watching the videos the way we're doing them. The one thing I'm not going to do is go back to 2D because I don't like the way 2D looks now. So we're definitely not going back to 2D. But if there's a better 3D view than this one that you'd like to see, I'm willing to experiment. But it would need to be um, a similarly unanimous vote. Or something. We'll figure something out. But I like this sideline view. I don't see how you can get much better than this. It's. I think it's a nice, a nice blend between enjoying the match engine. That's about the fourth penalty Falcao's won since he's been playing as an advanced forward. By the way, he clearly has got a good dive on him, and they've all been from that sort of situation—a through ball, and he just falls over. Uh, Fabinho to take. He's been doing all right with his penalties, and there he is again, and we're one nil up. Um, but yeah, this sideline view. I think it gives us a. A nice view of the shiny new graphics engine, and it does look good. But at the same time, because it's quite far back and we get about half the pitch on screen at any one time, we still get a good idea of what's going on on the pitch in the same way we used to with the, the 2D dots. Whereas I think a lot of the other views, it can be quite difficult to see what the rest of the team is doing. So, for example, at the moment, I can see every single one of my players. So I know... Oh, what a goal from Jovetic. I know that the only two players we ever have back are our two centre-backs. I know just how far forward our complete wing-backs are pushing on each side. I've got a good idea of where Fabinho's sitting just in front of the back two. It gives me a good feel for the team shape. But oh, what a finish. What a finish. Ten minutes in. I don't know how good Roma are these days. Look at the state of our Champions League group, by the way. Roma, Feyenoord and Porto. We have got to be absolutely on our game to make any kind of progress in the Champions League. It's helpful when you come up against a team who decide to play two injured players in the shape of Pellegrini and Fazio in the Roma team. But still, I'd like to think Roma are a decent enough team. They're in the Champions League. They can't be that bad. And we're 2-0 up after 10 minutes, which is... I mean, that's that's a fairly pleasant situation to be in. Matinho knocks it back to Sadibi, who crosses, and I think, was it Falcao who knocked the ball down? Falcao and Lamar were both sort of hovering in there, and it fell to Jovetic, and he couldn't quite convert it. But Fabinho now, with a chance to get the cross back in, he finds Glick, Gilk, Glick, Glick. I'll learn their names eventually. I obviously don't know anything about real-life football. The important thing is, 32 minutes into the match, we're 3-0 up against Roma now. And for the third successive game, using our diamond, we've scored three goals. So if nothing else, I've got a team. I've got the team playing like my team. We're playing Kev style. We're just trying to score as many goals as we possibly can, and hopefully we won't concede too many along the way. But you know, my 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 view has always been: if we're gonna, as long as we score five or six goals in a game, <laughs> we're not going to concede five or six very often, surely. And if we do. We get a nice little 6-6 six, six draws that we all love so much. Right, Falcao loses the ball on the halfway line and there's not much in the way of cover behind him. But Tillemans comes clear with the ball and it's Jovetic. He's got Sadibi wide on the right. Can he find him? He doesn't. Tucks it inside to Moutinho. Tillemans again. We've got so many players over. Congolo crosses and it's cleared. But I love the fact that despite playing what's a really narrow system, because our wing-backs are pushing on so far, we're... Um, we're basically playing with wingers. I don't know why I didn't use complete wing backs in FM17 at all. Have they always been this good? Or are they just the best thing about FM18? Because they're. I don't know. It could be that. It could be that we've just got some particularly good attacking fullbacks here at Monaco. But either way, we've found a system that's. 
that's getting our fullbacks into the game. And I haven't enjoyed watching fullbacks play this much since Ipswich in FM16 when I had the mighty Lazaroff charging up and down the right wing. And it feels a little bit like we've got that on up and running again. And I like that. That's that's awesome. Right. Let's let's go and grab another goal. I like getting extra goals. Although this is where we are. We were a little bit exposed because you can see Congolo's pushed really far forward there. And if the ball gets in behind him like this, we're going to get caught out a little bit and it leads to a goal. I mean, we called it. We knew it was coming. We are going to get caught out like that from time to time. But on the flip side of that, he's got an assist for us today as well. So I don't mind if our left back lets their, their wingers in behind him once, but then also gets an assist. I can live with that. I'd rather score one and concede one rather than no goals happen at all. Always been the Kev way. Right, let's go and grab a fourth. Are we we're at home, aren't we? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh it doesn't make any difference. Home or away, we're gonna play the same way. We're gonna attack, 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 attack. It's the correct way to play football. Let's make some substitutions. And why isn't it letting me click the tactic screen? There we go. We'll make our substitutions now. Someone tweeted me over the weekend as well. I'm sure you've all discovered it by now. But if you don't like this screen, just like I don't like this screen, in match, you can just click where it says tactics there and you get back to the good old-fashioned tactics screen, which is much easier to make your substitutions with. Right, let's take off Tielemans, bring on Berger. Falcao's having his weakest game since we've changed around the system, and we're going to bring Baldy on up front, because he's really going to struggle to get in the team now that we're not playing with any wide players. So we need to we need him to re-emerge as a striker, really. And Sadibi, I think, is probably the man to come off as well. Torre can come on for him. Sadibi, not having the best of games, a little bit tired. He has been doing an awful lot of running for us in the three games since we switched up the system. So I think we do need to make sure that we keep our fullbacks nice and fresh. But Roma on the attack again here, and this is where it becomes a little, little bit scary, especially when we've taken off... Our main, um, our main striker in the shape of Falcao. If they grab another goal here, then I'm going to start to panic a little bit. And I certainly don't think any of how we've set this team up suits dropping down to a counter-attacking system or anything like that. It would involve completely reinventing the team. And as I've found in the first few games of this save, I am, I'm fresh out of ideas for 4-3-3s and 4-2-3-1s. Nothing's working. And while we've got a system that at least allows us to score goals... We're just going to have to accept we're going to concede a few. Berger has a shot. And, I mean, look at that. We've gone, we've scored, had 19 shots. They've had five. And because we're working the ball into the box as well, 13 of our, or 14 of our 20 shots now uh, are on target as well, which is massive. Fairly even possession, which I'm a little bit surprised about. I wouldn't necessarily expect to have a lot of possession playing the way that we're playing because we're moving the ball around so quickly. But with the short passing in there, I guess it kind of balances that out. And I tell you what, this is all working really rather well. We're going to beat Roma and find ourselves top of our Champions League group. Maybe not, because with two minutes still to go, there's only one goal in it. They're chasing back now, and um, we are still top of the group right now. Whether we end the match there, I don't know. And that's gone down as an own goal. And I don't see how that's an own goal. I mean, that's, that's about as clear not an own goal as anything has ever been. Was that the previous one was an own goal? Is that what it was telling me? Right, that's a weird corner because no one on either team is anywhere near it. It falls to Fabinho eventually via Lamar and Baldi maybe. And was it Baldi who had the shot? I'm lost now. Um, but now Roma on the attack again. If we concede here, my little summing up the match speech is for nothing. But luckily, luckily we hold on. We pick up the 3-2 and thumbs ups all round. Everyone's happy particularly me and now we're going to play top of the table Strasbourg in in the French league Ligue 1 and try and get ourselves into a decent situation in the league as well this could be a very good episode in the end no need for any changes for the Strasbourg game then um, other than just mixing the bench up just ever so slightly but the Baldi injury in the last game nothing significant so we go into this top of the table clash because we're up to third after two straight wins in the league um, still being early days in the season. So a top of the table-ish clash. I don't think we can actually go top of the league. Um, in fact, let's race through these screens because I want to see a league table. Um, but of course, because, is this a deliberate thing now early on in the match we don't get to see the league table? Is this a bug? Is this something other people are having? 
Um, I don't think we can go top. I think there's more than a three-point gap. To, oh, here we go. Um, yeah, there is considerably more. But we were third at kickoff. Uh, but I guess we need to score to get back up to those giddy heights. And Thomas Lamar does exactly that. And that goal puts us back up to third place, I think. If, assume, obviously, assuming everything ends as it is. Although it only puts us up to fifth. Is the league table just not updated yet? Because I feel like we should got an extra two points for that goal going in. Falcao with a cross. And then he tries again. And this time does find Lamar. Right. So now do we get to see the points applied to the league? League tables in match. Not my favourite thing right now. But what I am quite keen on is being in the lead against the top of the table team 10 minutes into the game. So, you know, you've got to take the ups with the downs. I can, I can, Right, here we go. So we are up to third. And as it stands, up to third, three points behind Strasbourg, who are a team that hopefully we're going to prove today that we're capable of beating. So we might actually find ourselves in the not too distant future into that two-horse race situation with PSG that we're... I don't know about you, I'm a little bit worried about. My board were expecting me to win the league this year and we all saw in that, was it episode two, where we played against Paris Saint-Germain and we were just nowhere near their quality. Congolo, though, oh, that was a lovely little cutback cross and that's a real shame that that didn't lead to a goal because he was shaping up to shoot. I was convinced he was going to shoot that across goal and just tucked it back across to where there was two or three of our players queuing up to finish and none of them managed to put it away. I mean, and that's a terrible corner from Matinho. And now Strasbourg with a chance for a break, but Congola gets the tack in, but the tackle in, not the tack in. Um, but we found himself out of position and we have players over him. I mean, that's just a good counter-attack. It's only the second shot on target of the entire game. And we just had too many men too far forward and just found ourselves. I mean, look at that. It's, it's three on three and... We're a little bit slow. Who's that? Who's really slow there? Not him, him. Number two, Fabinho. Was really slow to come across and cover. He knew he knew we were a little bit stretched and just let them run in behind him. But Falcao misses an absolute sitter. Goodness me. How do you miss a chance like that? We should have scored three goals. We had that beautiful little chance early on from the cutback cross. And Falcao should not be missing chances like that. And I don't understand how we've apparently not had a clear-cut chance in this game. Because if that Falcao effort just then was not clear-cut, I don't know what the words clear and cut mean. One all at half-time, but we're absolutely dominating the game. Uh, right. We just need to... We just need to make our domination count in this second half. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to not win this game, but it doesn't get us very close to that whole two-horse race situation if it... Oh, Jemison's in and it's 2-1. And Thomas Lamar, I tell you what, a lot of you were screaming out for it down in the comments after the first few episodes. Why am I playing Thomas Lamar out wide? He's an attacking midfield player. And although... I, in theory, I should know that. I couldn't help but think, well, in FM17 and FM16, I always played him wide and he was brilliant. And also, if you have a look at his little suitability for position circle thing, the game tells me he can't really play as an attacking midfielder very well. He doesn't suit any of the roles. Despite him being an attacking midfielder, he's not well suited to any of the roles you can play in that position. But in the end, kind of having to... There you go, look. Attack him in field on attack. Barely over half suitability. Only competent at it. Which, I mean, I'm flabbergasted because he's clearly super competent. That's how we'll describe it. Right, Jovetic not having the best of games today. We'll try Carrillo today rather than bringing on Baldi because we need a goal. Let's bring on a proper striker. Tielemans is going to come off for Berger. And we might just leave it there. Rather than do, I mean, for some reason, in the last last few weeks of playing FM17, I got into this habit of making triple substitutions. It's a bad habit that I need to get out of. So we'll make we'll do we'll do a couple there, and then we'll do our traditional third around about now. We all know the correct the correct Kev substitution schedule. Falcao not having the best game. Neither is Fabinho. We don't really have like for like replacements for either of them. We could bring Koric on for Fabinho. I don't really want to take off Falcao when we need a goal. Drop Berger back there and do that. I mean, it's not perfect, but it might give us a little bit more creative oomph in that midfield. 
Mm, I don't know if that was a good substitution or not. I can't decide. Um, are we winning? When do... Goodness me, wake up, Kevin. I know it's been a long weekend, but I'm making substitutions as if I'm trying to win the game and we're 2-1 up. And I remember the goal now. Oh, yeah, yeah. We don't have to put this one on the internet, do we? Goodness me, I could have taken off Falcao and put Baldi on and gone to a 4-3-3 or 4-5-1 or something to close the game down. But no, we decided to go and attack, attack, attack. If we score another goal here, it's worth doing. And it is Falcao and it's 3-1 and it was all deliberate. I, I was tricking you. I was tricking them. It was all deliberate. Attacking, an attacking ploy. I'm trying to fake incompetence so that... No one expects me to do well. And that, there you go, Falcao making up for that terrible miss he had in the first half. We have a pretty tasty finish. We've had 10 corners in this game. That's that's quite good. I might have a look at the set-piece screen. I've never really looked at it. It might be time to explore the set-piece screen this year. Um, but we seem to be doing all right without it. Now that's, what, four wins on the bounce? Yes, four wins on the bounce. We're up to third in the league. And we're top of our Champions League group. Just about getting the hang of FM18. I hope. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.